everyone. Hope everyone's still continuing to stay safe and healthy. Um, welcome to week two of our Youth Fitness um, Online program. For anybody who maybe didn't join in last week, I am Brooke Smith. I am a child and youth worker with the Chatham Kent Community Health Centers. And in addition to being a child and youth counselor, I am also a youth fitness specialist, which is what's leading us here to these online trainings. I'll be working through various styles of workouts that we can be doing. Um, during these unprecedented times while we're at home with our families. So these are simple workouts that you can be doing either in the comfort of your own home or outside, which is what I'm going to be doing today with you. Um, for anybody who did join us last week, last week we worked through a uh, ascending and descending pyramid style workout. Today we're gonna be introducing a little bit of a different style workout and it's called the Tabata interval workout or workout style. And what we're gonna be looking to do today is it's 20 seconds of exercise 10 seconds of rest and in each Tabata set um, you'll be working through eight intervals. So again 20 seconds of exercise, 10 seconds of rest. So it's short bursts of energy um, followed by brief periods of rest. So to get started today it'll be very similar to last week. We're going to do a very brief warm-up. I won't work you through the full 30 seconds of each exercise for warm-up. I'll just kind of demonstrate them for you. But again, for warm-up, you'd be doing 30 seconds of exercise um, for each one, which would end up totaling about a two and a half minute warm-up. And then we'll get right into the actual uh, workout itself, which again, I won't be working through all eight sets or all eight intervals for every um, Tabata set. I'll just demonstrate both the exercises for you. So it'll probably be 40 seconds I'll be demonstrating per um, Tabata interval. So to get started, again, all you would need, we're trying to really limit the equipment that's necessary. So all you would need would be just comfortable shoes, um, probably some comfortable clothes that you can move around in and something to drink. So some water just to stay hydrated as we work through this. Because it's just a short condensed video, um, I won't be actually taking water breaks, but as you work through this, feel free to stop and take breaks or have some water as needed and work through at your own pace. So I will be showing both um, the exercise as well as a modification for it, just so that we can, again, depending on our abilities, we can be working through it um, comfortably. With that being said, um, because you're gonna be likely doing this at home, possibly even on your own with nobody kind of supervising you, I really want you to be aware of safety. So um, make sure you're paying attention to your form as you're working through these exercises. And if anything feels uncomfortable or maybe that it's not quite right, please stop what you're doing. Um, as again, no one will be there to actually supervise and kind of guide you. And this video is just to demonstrate all the exercises for you. So with that being said, um, we again can't be held responsible for anything. Um, so please just be cautious and careful as you work through these. All right, so we're gonna get started. And if you did take part last week, you're gonna recognize this warm up because they're all the same exercises. So what we'd be looking to start with is a light jog just to kind of get our heart rate up a little bit, get our muscles loosened up. So for our jog, you can choose to do this stationary, so just staying in one position, or if you have room and space around you, you can be jogging around. So you would look to do 30 seconds of a light jog. Once you've completed your jog, you're going to be then going into jumping jacks. So for jumping jacks, again, arms are coming up overhead, you can clap overhead and then back down. So it would look like this. To modify jumping jacks, if maybe jumping is not something you're comfortable with, again, you can eliminate the jog, step your foot out to the side as your arms come up, and then out to the other side. So this would be your modified jumping jack. Once again, you'd be doing 30 seconds of jumping jacks. And then we're gonna move on to walking lunges. So for walking lunges, what you're looking to do is you're looking to bring that knee down to touch the ground. And then you come back up and you would do the same thing on the other side. So for this one, again, you can be doing it stationary just in one position, or you can be moving around the space that you have. The next one after you've done your 30 seconds of walking lunges would then be to do some glute kicks. So what we're doing here is we're looking to bring our heels up right underneath us. So as you can see again, we can do it stationary in one position, or we can be doing glute kicks traveling around the room or the space that you have. To modify this one, again, you're gonna simply eliminate the jog, and you're gonna just walk it out, bringing those heels right up underneath you. 
So once you had completed your glute kicks for 30 seconds, your last one for warm up is high knees. So for high knees, you're looking to really drive those knees up. And again, modified version for this is you're simply going to walk it out, but again, you're driving those knees up in front of you. And once you've completed your 30 seconds of high knees, you've now worked through your warm up. So at this point, you can grab a drink of water, kind of let your heart rate come down if you wish. And then we're actually going to get started with the Tabata style workout. So again, what this looks like is there's going to be two exercises for each set. So for set one, we're going to be looking to do burpees, touching our chest down to the ground, and plank tuck jumps. So I'll be demonstrating both of those for you. But what we're going to be doing is it's 20 seconds of each exercise. So it'll be 20 seconds of burpees, followed by 10 seconds of rest. And then the same, and it'll be 20 seconds of plank tuck jumps, followed by 10 seconds of rest. And what you'd be doing to complete your full Tabata set is you'd be repeating each of those four times for a completion of eight exercises in your four minute set. For this, you have a couple options of how you want to time it. So for anybody who maybe has um, an iPad or an iPod or a phone, you can actually download um, a Tabata interval timer if you want, which makes it very simple because then it times it for you. Otherwise, what I'm doing today is I'm just going to be using my timer on my phone and you can simply time 20 seconds. As soon as that 20 seconds is up, then you can follow your timer and just watch and it would be 10 seconds of rest and then you'd start again with another 20 seconds of exercise. And you can do this in each Tabata interval is a total of four minutes. So to get started, I'm going to demonstrate the first exercise and the first exercise again is a burpee. But for our burpees this week, we're actually going to be going down and touching our chest right to the ground. So here's what your burpee would look like. You jump up to start, come down, hands are placed on the ground, jump those feet out. And once you're in your plank position, then you touch your chest right down to the ground, push yourself back up, feet jump in and up. So again, it would look very much like this. Just like anything else, you can modify a burpee. So for modifying a burpee, you're going to be eliminating the jumping in it. So your arms will come up, you're going to put your hands down on the ground, walk those feet out this time, your chest still comes down to touch the ground, at which point you push up, walk your feet in, and come up. So just without all the jumps. So one more time, burpee. Or modified, so no jumping. Hands come down, feet go out, chest comes down, come back in and up. You would have completed this for 20 seconds, at which point when the 20 seconds are done, you would then have 10 seconds of rest. So you can catch your breath. Maybe if time allows, you can quickly grab a drink and then you'll be going right into your plank tuck jumps. So for plank tuck jumps, you're going to get into a high plank position, at which point you're going to jump both feet in and then back out. So again, in and back out. To modify this, you would walk your feet in and then walk your feet out. So again, modified one more time, feet in and feet back out. Otherwise, you're jumping your feet both in and out, in and out. So this you'd be completing for 20 seconds, at which point you would stop your time and have 10 seconds of rest. In order to have completed a full Tabata set, you will have done these intervals four times each for a total of eight intervals in that uh, four minute set. For set two, um, again, you can work through this at your own pace. You can take longer breaks or shorter breaks if you wish. But for set two, what we'd be looking to do is we're gonna be doing prison cell push-ups and push-up side plank. So for prison cell push-ups, you would be again starting in a high plank position. You're gonna do a push up, and then you're gonna bring a knee into the elbow, and then the other knee into the elbow. And that is one prison cell push up. So push up, knee in, knee in. To modify this, you can start on your knees for your push up. So again, on your knees, it's gonna look the exact same. Down, up, 
And then to bring your knees in though, you would go back to your high plank, knee in, knee in. So we would do that for 20 seconds, have our 10 seconds of rest, and then we would go into a push-up side plank. So for push-up side plank, you would start in your high plank position, you're gonna go down for your push-up, and then you're gonna go over to the side into a side plank position, and then back down. And we would do the exact same thing on the other side. So push-up, over to the side, and side plank. To modify this, again, you'll go down on your knees, push up and then over to the side and you can keep that one leg actually rested on the ground for your side plank and then back into the center push up over to the side keeping again that leg underneath for support arm up and that is your modified push-up side plank so for our second Tabata interval we would then do our 20 seconds of push-up side plank 10 seconds of rest and then we would go back to our prison cell push-ups. And you would be repeating these four times each. For our next um, Tabata set, we'd be doing leapfrog jumps and lunge jumps. So for leapfrog jumps, what you're doing is you're doing one jump forward and one jump back. So you're gonna start in a crouchy frog position, kind of with your hands so they can touch the ground. That's when you know you're low enough. And what you do is you leapfrog forward and back. And you would just keep going forward and back. So again, forward and back. Again, to modify, you're going to eliminate the jump. So you're going to stay low, you're going to walk forward, and then you're going to walk back. Forward and back. You will then have completed that for 20 seconds. Take your 10 seconds of rest. And then what we're doing is we're doing lunge jumps. So for lunge jumps, Pick one leg to start in front of the other, start in a lunge position, and then jump and switch. Okay, and you're always finishing in that lunge position. Again, to modify this when you're going to eliminate that jump. So you would start in a lunge position, and then you would step your foot out and go to the other side. And you would continue to alternate between your left and your right side. So you would have then completed 20 seconds of your lunge jumps, had 10 seconds of rest, and then went right back into, into your leapfrog jumps. And you would continue to work through these for your eight intervals. For set four, we're actually gonna be focusing on our core. So you would be going down onto the ground. And I think we actually would have looked at jackknives last week. So for jackknives, you're gonna start laying down and you're gonna choose one leg to start. So if we're starting with our left leg, our right arm is gonna be coming up. So left leg comes up, right arm comes up to touch. And then you're gonna switch. So left arm, right foot. So you're always touching your opposite hand to your opposite foot. The second exercise in this Tabata set, so after you finished your 20 seconds of jackknives, and had your 10 seconds of rest. The next exercise is a flutter kick. So for flutter kicks, we can actually do this one of two ways. So you're always gonna be laying on your back. You keep your head rested on the ground and we can either flutter with our legs just fluttering up and down or we can try to crisscross our legs. So if we're gonna do our crisscross, it's one leg comes over top of the other. So again, fluttering up and down, or crisscross. If you want to challenge yourself a little bit, because we are working through each of these four times in our Tabata set, you'll actually be doing flutter kicks four times, therefore meaning you can do it twice with your legs fluttering up and down, and then you can actually alternate and do twice with your legs crisscrossing. So after we finish our jackknives four times through, and our flutter kicks four times through, we would then again have a little bit of a break, and then we would go on to set five. So for set five, we're again going back to upper body. So we'd be looking to do what's called staggered hand push-ups and army crawl, also known as high to low plank. So for staggered hand push-ups, what we're really looking to do here is we're gonna stagger the way our hands are positioned so that one is out in front 
and one is set a little back so they're not just evenly distributed. So for this one, we'll start with our left arm forward. Therefore, our right hand is going to be set back a little bit. And same concept as a normal push up. You're then going to push up or down and up. So again, down and up. To modify this, again, you would drop down to your knees, but the exact same concept. So one hand will be staggered a little bit out in front of the other hand. So down and up. With our staggered hand push up, again, you'll be rotating through this four times. So what I would really encourage is try to be mindful of which hand you've had out in front. And the next time you get to staggered hand push ups, place the other hand out in front just so that you're more balanced by the end of it and you've had equal distribution. After our staggered hand push ups is army crawl or high to low plank. So for army crawl, you're going to start again in a high plank position. And what you're going to do is you're going to choose one arm to go down on first. So for this, I'll go down on my right arm first. I'm going to go down into a low plank position and then come back up into a high plank position. So it's down and up. To modify this, again, I'm going to drop my knees to the ground. I'm going to go down onto my elbows to low plank and back up to high plank. And I can alternate which arm I choose to go down and which arm I come up on. So you would work through your 20 seconds of army crawl, then you would have 10 seconds of rest, then you would go back to 20 seconds of staggered hand push-ups, followed by 10 seconds of rest, and then back to your army crawl again. For set six, set six is going to be a pl different plank variations. So we're going to be doing plank jacks as well as plank lunge jumps. So for this, you would always start in your high plank position. And what you're looking to do here is you're gonna be jumping your feet out and into the side. Kind of the same concept as a jumping jack, but in a plank position. So your feet jump out and back in. Out and back in. To modify this, you can walk your foot out and then back in, out to the other side and then back in. For plank lunge jumps, you will always again be starting in your high plank position. To start with this one, it's sometimes easier to start with one foot already in. So pick either your right or your left leg to start in. And you're gonna be doing a lunge jump and you're gonna switch. And you're gonna alternate back and forth as to which foot jumps in towards your hand. The modification for this one is to eliminate that jump. So you would start in your plank position and instead of doing the jump to alternate your legs, you would then walk the foot out instead of jumping. So foot starts towards my hand, bring it back, and then the other one comes out. And you would continue to alternate back and forth for your 20 seconds. So once you've done your 20 seconds of plank jacks, your 10 seconds of rest, your 20 seconds of plank lunge jumps, your 10 seconds of rest, you would then repeat that same cycle three more times through. As we are through towards our last couple, set seven is back to our lower body. So it's jump squat, heel tap, and jack squats. So for jump squat, heel tap, you're gonna start in a squat position. As you jump up, your feet are going to click together. So that's that heel tap part of it. So start in your squat position. As you jump, your heels tap. To modify this, again, you're just going to simply squat. So you wanna make sure the weight is being distributed into your heels. So you're gonna squat back, chest stays up, and then back up. Otherwise, for the jump squat, heel tap one more time, start in your squat, chest is up, tap those feet together. So you would do your 20 seconds of jump squat heel tap, at which point you'd have 10 seconds of rest, and then you would go into your jack squats. So for jack squats, you're gonna jump your feet out, at which point you're gonna squat down and tap the ground. So it's jump in, out, tap. To modify this, again, you'd be eliminating that jump. So walk out, squat, 
tap, back in. Out, squat, tap, back in. So you would work through 20 seconds of jack squats, at which point again you'd have 10 seconds of rest. Then you would go back to, into your jump squat heel tap, 10 seconds of rest after your 20 seconds of exercise, and then back to jack squats and continue to rotate between these two for your four minute set or eight times through in total. So four of each exercise. Finally, last round is back to core. So you'd be going down onto the ground and we're gonna be doing leg climbers. So with this one, we're gonna be looking to raise one leg in the air. So whether you choose for this one, we're gonna start with our right leg up. You'll be laying on your back to start and you're gonna to look to climb that leg. So you can physically actually use your hands and climb up that leg and tap the foot, or depending on your abdominal strength, you can also just come up and tap. So you would do 20 seconds of either physically climbing the leg or just coming up to tap. And then your next 20 seconds after your 10 seconds of rest, you'd be doing the exact same thing but with your left leg up instead. So again, you can either choose to climb that leg and then tap, or you can come up and tap. So for the last Tabata set, what you'd be doing is just rotating between which leg is up in the air. So you would do 20 seconds with your right leg up, 10 seconds of rest, 20 seconds with your left leg up, 10 seconds of rest at which point you would have successfully worked through your Tabata interval workout. So just quickly to recap, with Tabata, short bursts of energy followed by brief periods of rest. So you're really looking to exhaust that energy in those 20 seconds. And you're always alternating between two workouts or two exercises. So you'll do 20 seconds of your first exercise followed by 10 seconds of rest, 20 seconds of your second exercise followed by 10 seconds of rest, and then you're gonna go back to that first exercise for 20 seconds, followed by 10 seconds of rest, and then to the second exercise again for 20 seconds, followed by 10 seconds of rest. You will then repeat that another two times through. So as you work through each Tabata set, each one will be four minutes in total between the exercises and the rest periods. Once you've worked through all of these exercises, feel free, you can grab water again, but then we always wanna include our stretch. So for our stretches this time, we covered some last, during last week's peer, or class. We're gonna look at some different ones this time. So this week, we're gonna lay on our backs to start. You're gonna choose one leg to go up in the air. So we'll start with our right leg. You can secure it at the back of the leg. And you're gonna be pulling it as straight as you can so you can feel that stretch all up the back of the leg. With our stretches, again, you wanna make sure that you're doing it slow, that you're really holding, and that you can even maybe do it to the count of 10, or if longer, if it's feeling really good, or if those muscles are maybe a little bit tight. So we're gonna stick with our right leg for right now. We will move over to our left leg after, but for this one, I want you to then bend the knee, and with your left hand, you're gonna secure that right knee, and you're gonna pull it over and across. Again, really feeling that stretch. So you would hold this to the count of 10, maybe a couple seconds longer, at which point we're gonna plant that left foot on the ground, bringing that right ankle up because we're still working on our right leg right now. And what we're gonna do is we're then gonna scoop through, grabbing a hold of that left leg, and you're gonna lay back. So again, that right ankle is on the left knee, at which point we pull through, securing that left leg and bring it back towards our body as we lay back down. And what we do to one side, we always have to do to the other. So we're gonna repeat those exact same three exercises, but on the left side now. So the left leg would go up as straight as possible, securing it behind the leg. The second one is where you bend that knee, pulling it in and across.
And the third one is where we plant now that right foot on the ground. The left ankle is resting on that right knee. You're gonna pull in and through, securing that right leg and pulling it in and down. So just as we did for the right side, we'd be holding each of these for 10 seconds. At which point we're gonna extend both legs out. We're gonna roll up and we're gonna reach to touch those toes. So the goal for this is to really keep those legs straight. So again, depending on your range of motion or your flexibility, you may only be reaching partway down your shins and that is perfectly fine. You're just stretching as far as you can until you feel that little stretch behind the legs and then I want you to hold. Next, we're gonna butterfly. So we would have done this again last week. So for our butterfly, we're looking to bring our heels in together. Really trying to pull those heels in towards our body. We don't want them too, too far out in front of us. And then we can use our elbows actually gently to push down on those legs. Once again, depending on your flexibility or your range of motion, you may notice that you can bring those feet fairly close to your body. For others, they may have to be out a little bit further and that's perfectly okay again. You're just simply looking to feel that little bit of a stretch in the legs. As we work towards our upper body, we can actually just crisscross our legs just to get comfortable. You're gonna reach that left arm out, bring it across the body and you're gonna support it with the right hand. Again, you would hold to the count of 10. At which point we're gonna stick with our left arm here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna bring it up ahead and then as if we're gonna pat ourselves on the back and then bringing that right arm over to secure the left elbow. And you can focus on slowing your breathing or taking some slow deep breaths as you're stretching. You would hold this to the count of 10. And then we're going to do those exact same two exercises with our right arm. So our right arm will go in front of us. It's going to come across our body, at which point we're going to secure it or support it with our left hand. Hold for the count of 10, at which point the arm will come up ahead, over top, dropping it down as if we're going to pat ourselves on the back and supporting that elbow with our left hand this time. Feeling that stretch in the tricep. And finally, we're going to reach up as far as we can overhead. Taking a quiet, deep breath in. And as you exhale, the arms come down. So again, that was week two of our youth fitness program. Um, hope you enjoyed the Tabata style workout. Next week, we'll be introducing yet another style of workout that you can do either in the comfort of your own home or as we get these nice days, um, maybe even in our backyard or um, just anywhere that's on your property that allows you to still be safely practicing social distancing and not really requiring any equipment, again, besides your comfortable shoes, comfortable clothes, um, and maybe just something to drink. So thanks, take care, and we will see you next week.